Um, what we're basically hoping to do through this series is, like I said, we is, is wanted to build the community in, and getting you the information, ideas, and guidance that you all need to take your businesses to the next level. A lot of this is experience what we work on with our individual one-on-one -on -one clients or in our small group programs uh, with loan officers literally across the country, we identify uh, what are issues or concerns that seem to be a common theme. Um, by the way, we're also uh, looking forward to and excited about the kind of feedback growing within this community as we grow these programs. We want to hear from you guys as regular participants in these types of programs about what you would like to get more specific help or guidance with guidance with along the way. So be, be sure to post those in the chat and QA. We do read through the QA and chat logs at the end of each event to make sure that we're getting the information to you all that you need to be able to take your businesses to the next level. Well, today's program is focusing on mastering communication. Uh, Mr. Earl McLean is, uh, is one of our top coaches with the Maximum Acceleration Coaching Team, has been with us now for going on about four and a half years. Uh, Earl's background, uh, he was a facilitator, lead facilitator with Buy Referral Only program, one of the few guys in the country that was licensed to go out and do the on-site workshops. He would do the road show. You could be in 23 states every 90 days rotating through training programs in that facility program. Um, one of the other things that Earl has been exposed to and been involved in over the last several years since I've gotten to know him uh, is through a mutual friend of ours, Rene Rodriguez, uh, who Earl was also a certified facilitator for Rene uh, at the, the, the um, the Lentum programs working hand in hand with Renee's team. And today's topic is really talking about some of the physiology of how people make decisions and how we communicate with people to be able to make the things that we want to have happen happen for them and for their benefit. So that's where Earl is going to pick up and run with today's program, um, really giving you the information and insight that you need to be able to take your business to the next level by implementing these ideas and principles. So I guess without further ado, Earl, why don't you go ahead and take it and run with today's program. Fantastic. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate that. Um, now, is this clipping too badly? I can see that it is clipping a little bit, but uh, hopefully we'll get it worked out here. How's that sound? Still a little bit um, edgy, but uh, let's try and make the most of it. Okay, you got it. All right. So when we're talking about mastery communication, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Now, in fact, I drove down here with uh, Kevin Bjork, who is a, a not only a close friend of mine, but he's also one of the uh, big wigs, you might say, uh, who has worked for Wells Fargo for a long time. He put me together with joint ventures. That's one of the reasons we're down here in Des Moines. But uh, we talked on the road all the way up here, and one of the things that we talked about was this process that we're going to be discussing today. I'm going to try to help you understand where your clients, your prospects, where their minds are at through this first of a series, in fact, of how the brain works and connecting through human behavior. Because when we're talking about your brain and human behavior, um, I like to, uh, to use a lot of the research that I've studied on a, a man by the name of Paul McLean. Um, that's M-C-L-E-A-N, Paul McLean. Paul McLean was a uh, psychologist. He was also a lead researcher for the National Institute of Mental Health. And what Paul McLean says is that there's basically three parts of our brain. Now, I'm going to be talking about those three parts, but you're going to see me bring up a fourth part, which is the, the prefrontal lobes. Those part is actually part of the neocortex. So let's just go through them. The first part of the brain that he says receives information is the, what we call the basal ganglia is the technical term, but we call it the reptilian brain, and you may have heard something about that reptilian. This is the part we're going to spend most of our time on today, is the reptilian brain. I want you to truly understand uh, what the function of is the, of the reptilian brain. Once you truly understand how that works, you're going to start putting it together with, with human behavior, and you're going to finally figure out why people react or act the way that they do. And a lot of it has to do with this first brain center. Now, the second brain center is called the limbic system or the mammalian system. Um, the reason they call it mammalian is because it, uh, it's a brain that most closely resembles that in characteristics of mammals. Okay? 
That's the part we're going to talk about next time, one of them. Then finally, the logical centers of our brain. This is where we do our thinking, our processing. This is where um, all the logic happens, is in the hemispheric brain or the neocortex. That's the big gray matter that we think about when we think about the brain. Now lastly, part of the neocortex is the prefrontal lobe. Now the prefrontal lobes reside right behind your forehead. If you were to take two fingers on each hand and place them on, on top of your foreheads, that's where your prefrontal lobes are. Now the prefrontal lobes are kind of the CEO of the brain. It makes the decision. It uses the neocortex to process the information, but it makes decisions on future action and what we're, what we're going to do. We are the only mammals that have the prefrontal lobe. That's why deers run out in front of a car. Um, it's, said, it's said to have great vision, great foresight. What that means is that we can say, not that we can see into the future, but we can say conclusively, if, if A and B were to happen, I can be pretty safe in assuming that C is going to be the result. Okay, so in that sense, we have somewhat future vision. Okay, so let's talk about the triune brain theory a little bit. Because we have these three drivers of the brain, Paul McLean says that our behavior depends largely upon which brain is in the driver's seat. Now I explained that we receive information in a sequential order, the reptilian brain being the first one to receive information. So let's talk about the reptilian. Now unfortunately we're not going to have a chance to go through the other parts of the brain today, um, but, but hopefully um, uh, we'll be able to cover that down the road. I, I think we have some dates scheduled for that, so we'll be able to cover the other parts. But the reptilian brain, or the basal ganglia, um, the reason they call it reptilian is that it has characteristics that most commonly uh, reflect that of the reptile. Now, I'm not trying to say that there's that we've gone through some evolutionary process or that, uh, that we're lizards or anything like that. But not what I'm trying to say here. But those basic functions that, that reptiles impulsively have, those are the same functions that are within our reptilian brain. It keeps our autonomic functions functioning properly. We don't have to stop and think about our heart beating. We don't have to think about our breathing pattern. Uh, we don't have to think about the blood pumping through our system. All those are handled by our reptilian brain. This is also where you're, you're probably familiar with the unconscious brain when we talk about uh, things that happen unconsciously. This is where that resides, is in the reptilian. Now, what else do we know about reptiles? Well, we know that they're cold-blooded. They're not warm-blooded like mammals. We know that uh, they don't really uh, care about anything else except for themselves, that they're pretty much self-sufficient and, and worried about themselves, and they're going to keep themselves safe. Now, that word safe, I want you to hang on to just for a little bit. Rip, really, in brain, just wants to know, is it safe or am I safe? Can I trust you? That's all the reptilian brain wants to know. So if that is the primary function of the reptilian brain, to keep us safe, then it's really the best brain to receive information first. I mean, let's face it. If I was walking through the woods and I ran across a black, a black bear, I wouldn't want to have to stop and logically Google out my chances of survival. I'm probably going to be picking them up and laying them down. I'm going to be getting out of there. All right, because it's all about keeping me safe. Now there are some other uh, very, very distinct patterns about the reptilian brain. Number one, it's the it's the home of our panic button. It tells us when it's time to do one of these things: fight, flight, or freeze. You've probably heard that before, and perhaps you've never really known where that comes into play within our brains. But this is the the three tools that the reptilian brain has to deal with is fight, flight, or freeze. And those are the only three tools that it has. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. So is this a good brain? Well, it's not a real smart brain, because these are the only tools it has. And it knows when to panic to keep me safe. Okay, so we'll just to lay the groundwork on reptilia, fight, flight, or freeze. So if these are the only three tools it has to deal with, why would that be good? Well, it's good because it operates instinctively. It wants to keep me safe. It wants to know that there's there's nothing that's going to harm me, just like a reptile would. Okay, so the reptilian brain, in essence, is our first gatekeeper. It's the gatekeeper that monitors everything that's going on. 
It's worried about anything that's new or different, and it wants to keep change and growth out. It doesn't like new stuff. It likes its safety. Here's some characteristics of the reptilian brain. It monitors information. It monitors it very well. It knows what's going on all the time. That's, this is kind of where that unconscious brain plays in, if you will. When we talk about the unconscious brain, uh, when you walk into a room, your unconscious mind understands everything that's going on around it, more so than what you understand consciously. It knows the pattern of the carpet on the floor. It knows the, how many acoustic tiles in the ceiling. It knows the color of the walls, things that we don't necessarily need at that specific time. Because what happens with our brain is it filters things out. So the, the reptilian brain monitors all this information. It has very limited vision. Now remember I said that the prefrontal lobes has great poor vision? Well, if this is our first gatekeeper and it stops there, it will literally tie up our brain and stop information from going on to the other parts of our brain for processing. It has very limited vision. I want you to think about a time when you were really upset with somebody, and it's all you can think about. In fact, it's almost a, a narrow tunnel and it, it, as far as what you're looking down. It, I don't know if you've ever been so mad that that's all you could focus on. Okay, That's that reptilian brain in full force. It does not interact. It's not interested in bonding. Remember, we talked about reptilian brains. They don't even eat their young. If they're hungry enough, there's no bonding going on. It only cares about its own survival, its own safety. There's no bonding at all. It's territorial. It's turf-oriented, very protective. It retreats to the familiar. And it's silent. There is, there is no word center. There are no word centers in the, in the reptilian brain. It's not until we get to the neocortex that we actually discover that we have three verbal centers. So it's silent, pre-verbal. The reptilian brain will show anger when it's threatened. That means that if it does find itself in that panic mode, that one of the tools it can use is the fight mode, and it will show anger. So think about the last escalation you had with a client. Think about um, what, the, what the real problem was. Generally, they start yelling about something totally off the subject. You've probably experienced that at home as well. You know, the toothpaste in the sink type of thing. You know, it's, it's something that we actually uh, think that is the real problem, but it's just the reptilian showing anger is all it is. Some of its easiest for problems are the easiest to show anger around. When survival is threatened, the reptile may take the driver's seat and shut down the rest of the brain. It's done. It, it does not allow the information to go past the reptilian. So it ties up our brain power with its fear. Now here are some things that the reptilian brain does not understand. It doesn't understand the need for relationships, teamwork. It doesn't understand caring, compassion, new ideas and flexibility, responsibility, global issues, imagination, and it doesn't understand words. These are all things that we need to have a decent communication with another person, whether it be a client, a family member, whoever. So in other words, if they are in full-blown reptilian, or if you are in reptilian, the conversation is not going to go real well. Now, here's what some of the things that the reptilian brain does need to feel safe. It needs routines, predictability, repetition. It needs safety, boundaries, results, successes, give it safety, systems, processes, rituals. The predictability and the repetition, have you ever thought about when you were in grade school about how many fire drills we went through? over and over and over and throughout our school experience and especially in the younger grades, you ever thought about what they were really trying to do there? You see, my kids, um, they can look at, at something on TV and they can think of, you know, if they watch a fire fight situation, they can think that they know how they would react in that situation. But the truth of the matter is, is we don't know how we're going to react. Because at that point, when our brain is tied up with that fear, the reptilian takes over and it's not a real smart brain. So these routines are, and, and predictability and is put into place so that we automatically, in order to keep ourselves safe, fall in to that repetition. I hope that makes sense. Um, and let me say it again. So we will do things over and over again as children and learn things over and over again that will keep us safe in case something happens 
and the reptilian brain comes up. Okay, so what does this mean to us? Uh, I've talked quite a bit about the reptilian brain, and, and maybe you know more now about the brain than most of the people you know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you know at least a little bit more than you knew coming into this. But how can we really apply this? Where is the practical application here? Well, let's talk about prospects for a minute. Have you ever been in a meeting with a prospect, someone who's thinking about doing business with you, you're ready to present your value proposition, and all you can see with them is the guard up. You can see that they're just not really listening to what you're saying because they're looking for the catch, right? They're looking so they're guarded. They're looking for what else you're going to say to try to sell them something. Okay, let's face it, you know, we, uh, as mortgage professionals, we have to really look at the reality of what's happened in the past years and people that have been taken advantage of by some mortgage people. We don't exactly have the best reputation in the world right now. So to overcome that, we have to understand how the reptilian brain works. If these people are sitting with us in a meeting and they're in any slight form of reptilian, now this doesn't have to be an expanded version. It doesn't have to be that all-out anger that I was talking about earlier where we have that narrow, narrow vision and we're, we can't really see anything else. It doesn't have to be that. There could be a mild form of reptilian, a form that just pops up that keeps us just so far away. If that happens to us in a presentation of value, remember the reptilian is not a very smart brain and it's going to block the information from going to their logical centers of the brain. So what do we have to do? We have to make them feel safe. Otherwise, they are never going to listen or even hear half of what we say in our value proposition. And they're going to shop us. They're only going to be interested in rate. They're going to be very narrow-minded and narrow vision when it comes to their loan. Okay, let's look at, okay, we're going to miss both of our presentation. So let's look at uh, something else. Let's look at it possibly with our clients. Let's look at an escalation type of a situation. A client calls up furious about something, just furious. And it's really not necessarily the first thing that they bring up that they're so mad about. There's usually something underlying. These are human behaviors, the way people act. It's just like an iceberg. 90% of it is underwater. So there's usually something underlying that anger. But it's easier to be angry about this than it is anything else. Let me tell you a little story that I had about a gal that, uh, that called me up when I was working with Viral Pro Only. And uh, she, the, their process there is that um, they, they take the coaching. If they decide to get involved in the coaching there, uh, they, they sign on for a year. And at, towards the end of that year, they're going to get a letter about six weeks out that tells them that we're ready to renew their membership. You assume the sale, right? Well, we had a number of people that you would call in and be just really upset because they didn't want to continue their membership. And I happened to be fortunate enough to talk to one of these people early on in the process. And she called up and just was really unhappy, really unhappy because she got this letter. I don't want my membership to keep going. Uh, and I want you to make sure you cancel it. And I said, okay, um, I understand that. Can you, can you tell me why you don't want it to keep going? She said, because it doesn't work. I said, it doesn't work. She says, yeah. I said, what part of it doesn't work? She goes, none of it. I said, well, what part of it have you implemented in your business? She said, none of it. <laughs> well, it was obvious to me what had happened. It was pretty obvious that she just hadn't used the program. And so instead of taking the defensive approach, which I could have taken, I could have said, well, no wonder it's not working for you. You've got to do something with it, <clears throat> just like anything else. And I could have told stories to her about, but that would have just raised her reptilian even more. So she was mad about the fact that we were going to renew her membership. But what was she really mad about? So I took a step back, and first of all, I understood that I had to help her feel safe. She had to come out of that reptilian if I was going to talk to her in any kind of a logical manner. So I asked her and said, um, I said, okay, uh, uh, you know what? And her name was uh, uh, Jacqueline. She was from Canada. And I said, Jacqueline, um, I understand that you're really upset, and you know what? I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. You've, uh, you've paid for this program for an entire year, and you've gotten virtually nothing out of it. Am I right? She says, yeah, absolutely. I said, don't worry about it. I said, I will make sure that at the, in the next six weeks when you're due for renewal, I will make sure that, that you are canceled and that the card is not hit. He said, that fair enough? And she said, yeah, that's good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I said, but let me ask you if you'd be willing to do something for me, Jacqueline. 
because now I want to appeal to our limbic system, which is, we're going to talk about that at another time, but it basically says, do you care? And so I said, let me ask you this. I said, since you've gotten nothing out of the program, I said, I, I really don't want you to leave that way. I said, I, I'd really like for you to get something here so that, you know, it, it'd be better for all of us, right? Um, because you, obviously you can get something out of the program. So um, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to work with you over the next six weeks. Can you call me once a week and we'll do a 30-minute or an hour little coaching session and see if we can't find some way for you to benefit from this program before you leave. That way you leave with something. Is that, is that fair enough? And she goes, yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, she called me the first week, and we talked about some things, and I, I had to really get in and identify. I don't know if anybody saw the uh, ultimate interview um, uh, uh, workshop or webinar that we did last week or two weeks ago. Um, but we talked about that. I found out some needs that her, that her business had and identified some of them, and we put her to work. We gave her an assignment. She called me back the next week. The assignment was going well. She called me back the third week, and things were starting to happen for her. Then the fourth week, I didn't hear from her. The fifth week came and went. Didn't hear from her. So we got to the sixth week, and so I, I put a call into her, and I got her voicemail. And I said, Jackie, I said, um, here's my concern. I said, you know, we're at the end of our six-week period. Number one, I want to make sure that you've got some value out of the program over the last week, six weeks. I'm hoping that that's the case. But I said, number two, I said, I really need you to get in touch with me to let me know if you still want me to cancel your membership. I got a voicemail from this gal. Never heard from her again, but she left this voicemail on my voice, voice machine. And I'll never forget what she said. She said, Earl, it's Jackie. She goes, I made $36,000 in the last three weeks. Don't do anything. I want to stay in the program. Talk to you later. Click. And that's the last time I ever heard from her. Now, had I taken the other approach and I had brought her back into the red and kept her in reptilian by defending my status, by defending the fact that, yeah, she hadn't done anything with the program. No wonder it's not working for you. And she would have just gotten madder and probably would have canceled her membership and nothing would have ever come of it. She probably went out and told four or five of her friends that it was a lousy program. She might have gone out and uh, done something intentionally to try to hurt our program. But regardless of that, the fact that we were able to step back and care about her enough to talk her down and help her feel safe, talk her out of reptilian, appeal to her limbic, and then logically work out something together. She wasn't mad because we were going to renew her membership. That's not what she was mad about. She was mad because she hadn't gotten anything out of the program and probably more mad at herself than anything else. So with clients, when we go into escalations, we can talk about and really start to understand human behavior and what this reptilian can do, process complications, market changes. There's a lot of different opportunity for understanding human behavior and understanding why people do the things they do. But if we know that they're in reptilian and it's a mild form and all we have to do is make them feel safe, we might just change our language just a little bit to try to accomplish that. Okay, Eric. That's my presentation for today on awesome. human behavior and how the brain relates to it. So I, I, I oh, think that you were talking about maybe opening up for a question and answer, a Q&A um, via chat. Yes, definitely, Earl. A um, couple of things that we're going to do, folks, at this point. Um, already you snuck it up on me. You got, got through the program a little faster than I expected you to. Uh, normally, we would have a Q&A slide with some of the technical backhand stuff. We did not get the Q&A slide into today's program. Anyway, I do want you guys to go ahead and start posting your questions in the Q&A section related to the content that Earl has shared with you today and how we apply this to our daily businesses. Uh, go ahead and start posting those questions and comments in. By the way, uh, Earl alluded to part two and part three of this particular program. Um, which I just wanted to give you all the update on. <clears throat> Those programs are going to be on March 12th and March 19th um, is where we have them slotted in the schedule at, again, you know, our regular Tuesday, 11 o'clock Central, 12 o'clock Eastern is where those programs are going to start coming up. Please go ahead and post your questions into the Q&A at this moment, and we'll start getting to some of the questions. Uh, Okay, uh, one of the questions, Earl, is uh, is there a book that elaborates on any of this information or goes in any greater depth? Uh, are there some research materials or resources that, that people can use to learn this in a greater level of depth in a more tactical program? Yeah, you know what, if you, um, there's all kinds of books on how the brain works, and there's all kinds of books on 
on types of things that you can do tactically. But if you want to know more about Paul McLean's theory, the triune brain theory, uh, you can Google that. Google triune brain theory, Paul McLean, and it's M-C-L-E-A-N. And there's all kinds of stuff on the internet about it. Cool, cool. All right. Um, and Earl, I am um, going to post this in here. Uh, Paul, P-A-U-L-M-C-L-E-A-N. Mm-hmm. All right, great. Um, All right. Another question that's come across, and this one came through in private chat, is can you give us another example of how to diffuse the reptilian, how to create that order structure and predictability uh, with clients who are in um, you know, sort of that high rate mode, uh, you know, there's been some loan. And let me give you a more specific scenario to just maybe kind of help you crystallize your answer here. Um, uh, like, for example, let's say that we've had interruptions and delays to the closing of a loan. Um, stuff that wasn't our fault or the realtor's fault at all, maybe the builder gives something up and it, it delayed the process and has left the customer in, in just a very upset and difficult situation because they've had to have their life disrupted uh, by a transaction not going smoothly as we would all hope that it would. Um, how could you, can you help the audience kind of have a tactical understanding of how to, uh, how to approach that conversation and what we can do to diffuse some of that reptilian? Yeah, well, it's a cost analysis, isn't it? In other words, um, is what I'm upset about more important and bigger to me than what I'm trying to accomplish? You know, one of the things that I like to do, if you haven't, if, if you weren't in on the, um, the, the webinar we did two weeks ago, I'm sure we have it posted online, is, is my guess. We probably have it on our YouTube page there. Um, it's on the ultimate interview. What I like to do is I like to find out what the values are, what my, my core values of my clients are, what's really, truly important to them. And that walks them through it. And there's also a really great four option opener on that webinar that walks you through how can I lower the reptilian right up front. You know, um, so that four option opener works well for that. But if I can really truly find out what what my clients what's most important to them about doing this home loan and dig down really deep and find an emotional connection and a value, I can bring that back into the conversation any time any kind of escalation comes up. You know, so John calls up. He's upset because uh. You know, he's not going to make his closing date, or his um, maybe his uh, uh, appraisal came in low, or whatever the scenario might be. Uh, I can talk to John, and I can say, you know, I, I totally understand. I get it. You know, first of all, people want to know that they're heard, so it's extremely important to listen. Um, I think maybe one of these days we should do a webinar on active listening, Erica. <laughs> it's another thing that I really like talking about. But how do you really active listening, actively listen, and? So listening to John is going to help calm him. Repeating back what he says calms the reptilian simply because it's there, it's his words. They're not yours. All right, so that calms the reptilian and he knows he's being heard. People like to be heard. But once I get into a get the reptilians calmed down, I can bring John back around to what his values were. John, I understand that we're gonna be closing a couple of days late, and I understand you're really upset about it. Uh, however, if we're going to help get this college fund set up for your kid, which I know is really important to you, um, so that he can be the first one in the family that's ever graduated from college. If, if, if we're going to get that done, this is going to happen. And John's going to come back to his own values, his own words, because like, he's sold on his words. So does that help? Yeah, definitely, Earl. Thank you so much. Um, the ideas. Okay, guys, keep the questions coming. Even if we don't have time to address the questions directly in today's format, uh, we will make sure that our team follows up. Can you please continue to go ahead and post those questions uh, into the Q&A section. Um, by the way, um, Earl alluded to the ultimate interview um, webinar, which was uh, approximately two weeks ago. Uh, these are actually not posted on the public side of the page. They are held for this audience exclusively. So. Uh, anybody who would like to receive the information or links regarding uh, that program, feel free to go ahead and, and uh, just post it in the Q&A or chat. Let us know that you'd like a copy of that webinar um, recording, and then we'll get that out to you. Okay, well, looks like we have time for just one final question here um, when it comes to the reptilian um, and, and what can we do. Pro, the, the question is basically this, what can we do proactively, systematically in how we approach a 
new client conversation or a new business development partner conversation that could diffuse some of this reptilian, you know, uh, fight, flight, or freeze type response um, that is likely to be there the first time we make contact with a new potential customer. It's sort of that first impression management type stuff. First impression. Well, again, I like to use a four option opener. Um, I like the four option opener, especially when I'm dealing with someone for the first time, because these are options that they know they already have. You're just letting them know that you know that too. Uh, so when I meet with a client for the first time, and um, of course I, I coach and, and consult some, some fairly large corporations and companies, and so uh, it's very important to me that I get my message heard, and I want to make sure that their reptilian isn't raised. So I use this four option over with everyone. Uh, is I let them know, you know, I, I say I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me because I know your time is very valuable. And uh, I just want to let you know that I'm not here to try to talk you into anything. This is a no obligation consultation. There's no cost. I just want to talk to you and find out if we can discover where your company has some needs that I may be able to fulfill. But besides that and beyond that, I want you to know that you're basically going to have four options when we're through today. And the reason I say when we're through today is because I want them to make a decision, right? I don't want to be coming back five times and meeting with the client over and over again if they're going to say no anyway. So I let them know right up front. I say your first option is that you may decide to not do anything at all. You may decide that, uh, that you don't need a consultant or you don't need a coach. Um, and that's just out of, really off the plate. And so that's okay with me. I want you to know that that's, that's perfectly fine. If that's what you decide, you just let me know. Fair enough. They buy into that. They say, yeah, well, that totally lowers the reptilian. The second option is that you may decide that I'm not the right consultant for you. And you may just, we just may not click. And so if that's the case, I may be able to point you down, a, down a, the right path and maybe connect you with someone that would be a better fit. And I want you to know that that's okay with me as well, okay? And they say, okay, great. And then the third option is that you may decide to do this on your own. There's a, there's a lot of coaching materials on online, there's a lot of uh, you know advice that you can get. Um, and if that's the option that you take, I want you to let you know that I'm okay with that too. And they say, okay, great. Now of course the fourth option is the one where we do find a connection and we find a good basis for a relationship and you decide that we would like to work together. Is that good enough? And they say, yeah, fair enough. Now that completely lowers the reptilian for them. And it does it proactively. It does it before I even get into a conversation about my value proposition. Why? Because I want to be talking to the logical centers of the brain. I don't want to be talking to the, to the reptilian, which happens to be a very dumb brain. It's just not real smart. It's, it's a very important brain. It's something we need, but it's just not a real smart brain. It's not where the logic happens. So that's not the brain I want to talk to. So I do that proactively. And, and by the way, let me add this, too, is that fear that we, that we recognize when we're, when we're reptilian, uh, when we're really afraid, our brain doesn't understand fear, but it does understand that we are maxing out on stress. If you were to look at a stress continuum, a level from 1 to 10, um, that fear can be as big for you and that stress can be as heavy for you um, facing a great white shark as it is for me facing a bee. A bee. Because I'm, I'm afraid of bees. I really am. I'll tell you what, I get a bee in the room, and I'm picking them up, and I'm out of there. So, you know, it, it's the same amount of stress. Because our, our brain doesn't look at the level of fear. It looks at the level of stress. So your people could be sitting in, the, in this chair across from you at a very mild, but nevertheless, a certain stress level. Okay? So you have to kind of gauge that. And it doesn't mean that you're going to take care of it all right up front, either. Uh, I've been in coaching sessions where I've had to calm the reptilian, very mild form reptilian, but I've had to go back in and calm the reptilian several times throughout the coaching session because I brought something up that they didn't want to hear, that they didn't like. And so there was a little bit of stress that popped up. You know, it wasn't fear, it wasn't anger, it was just stress that their brain was, was experiencing. And in that instance, they're thinking inside their head, the reptilian is arguing with itself rather than listening to what I'm saying. And so I had to get, bring it back around and the way you let people know that is you let them feel safe. You help them feel safe. You know, I, I totally understand why you're feeling that way. Don't, don't worry about it. A lot of people do. Uh, I understand, and I'm here to help you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely, Errol. 
you know, there's so many great questions coming across right now, guys. I, I, I want to remind you that please post your questions. We want to make sure that our team has the ability to follow up with you after the fact, and we will be reaching out to you to answer these questions directly, even if we don't have time. This conversation has generated, obviously, a lot of interest. Earl will be coming back on the 12th and 19th of March for parts two and three in this series, uh, Mastering Communication, Connecting Through Human Behavior. Uh, to work into it. One last question that I think we've got time for, and I'm actually going to tackle this one personally uh, because I've had some very personal experience with this. Um, you know, one of the masters, the question is basically how do you deal with the irate client that won't listen to you and doesn't seem to want to even hear what you have to say? And, you know, there have been times in my career, one of them that I'm not really proud of, but there was a time where I had an issue where it was a busy time in my career. I had 14 or 15 loans in the pipeline. It was before I had hired an assistant, um, and I just was completely overwhelmed, working 100-hour weeks. I was at my absolute stress limit. We had a deal that the appraisal got awarded a couple of days early on a VA deal, so it was the house was not substantially complete. If any of you guys you know, have been involved with VA new construction deals, you probably have a better idea what I'm talking about. The, the deal changes dramatically when we're not at 95% complete. Anyway, long story short, the client was somebody who was a, a pretty experienced mortgage professional from another area that had relocated to my area, and I was able to do the loan. Uh, long story short is is there was a conversation I basically had to have with this client, Anna, um, to essentially just give her the opportunity to vent. I mean, it was literally, you know, you know, Anna, I want to reach out to you. I want to, you know, make sure you understand that I, I want to hear and understand your concerns. Um, you know, I know that, that this has been an upsetting and uncomfortable situation. Literally, your family has been living in a fifth wheel travel trailer for three weeks because of the delays the builder that this situation has caused. And, and I just want to let you know that I, I, I want to hear from you and understand your side of the story and give you that opportunity. And I shut up and let her just scream and yell and rant and rave for 20 minutes. It's, you know, there's a conversation in here that we call mending fences conversation, which I, I'm going to, you know, Earl, if you can help me remember to make sure that, that we get this into the, some of the follow-up messaging um, from today's program. You know, the whole idea of this conversation is, you know, we're reaching out. And, and one of my clients, by the way, who's, who's kind of mastered this concept, a, a guy in northern Tennessee, Randall Brower, has become an expert at this um, type of conversation and communication. Um, it, it has seen it, it turn, turn things around tremendously with clients. And, he, you know, the long story short, he works a lot in new construction. You guys have all had that experience. Builders don't seem to care about anybody else's timeline. They have their own agenda for when things get done. And a lot of times our clients are negatively impacted as a result of that. So as we've had these kind of conversations, um, you, know, you know, our clients have found that it's a great way to reengage. And in my case, um, it became such a valuable conversation that not only did I diffuse the possibility of Anna running out and, and yelling up and down the street and, and, and basically blacklisting me in, in a number of circles that she was very involved with in the local community or getting very involved with in the local community, by the time that Anna evented uh, and got her, the, this anger and emotion off her chest, and then I was able to dig a little deeper into to working with her to try and identify how we could have been future, you know, even if we couldn't do it for her, uh, you know, at least to be able to learn from that experience and to be able to, to hopefully try to avoid that happening to any future customer. Anyway, the long story short of that situation was with Anna is that she ended up actually coming to work for me and became one of the greatest blessings that's ever happened in my career because she was so knowledgeable and experienced. Um, and it turned out to be a very dramatic shift in the conversation is, is through that conversation of really identifying um, what we could have done differently, how it could have been managed better. Um, it became one of those uh, conversations that turned into her coming to work for me. and, and as I understand it, is still working for one of the loan officers that uh, that was on my team at the time. All right, guys. Well, just a couple of quick announcements that we want to share with you. Um, you know, at, you know at, at many of you've been asking about how we get people information about and what it is that we do with our group and one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. Well, one of the best ways we've found that uh, people can identify whether coaching is a good fit for them or not, if and when it makes sense for them to look at proceeding with. Uh, coaching is to actually experience it. So what we offer is what we call a strategy session. 
one-hour coaching program. You'll go really deep with one of our coaches on one particular issue or challenge that you're struggling with in your business or one opportunity that you can't quite wrap your hands around yet. Um, through the course of that conversation, if and when it makes sense to talk a little bit deeper, if it is something that you want to pursue, as Earl has laid out in today's program, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the commitments and investment on, uh, involved with that at that time. There is, of course, no cost or obligation to the session. It's simply just the way that we've found to be the easiest and fastest way to help you understand what coaching could potentially do for you in the growth of your business. So you are welcome to request one by going to our website, mxlcoach.com slash strategy. Uh, or you can simply post your request for a strategy session here in the uh, chat or Q&A section. Uh, keep in mind that we do have a limited number of these sessions available every week because our coaches are, are reaching pretty close to the maximum capacity of how many clients they can carry. They are scheduled on kind of a first-come, first-served basis. Um, again, I mean, like I said, it's, it's you know at the end of the day, for an uh, you know, investment of an hour of your time, you'll walk away with complete action plan and strategy to to accomplish one of your bigger objectives in the in the short term. Um, other things to keep in mind as we try and develop this community of growth and and uh, support that our company is providing to you, things that you want to think about. Um, one is, and actually these are I apologize, these slides are a little bit out of order. Um, Next program coming up um, is special guest speaker Greg Frost who's going to be talking to us about the power of ethical influence kind of on this theme of biomechanics and physiology and how it applies to the sales and influence process. Well, uh, Greg Frost is a certified expert on the, uh, has gone through the training program with Dr. Robert Cialdini from Arizona State University um, who has spent 26 years plus researching the psychology of marketing, human influence, and communication. And uh, Greg Frost is going to be sharing with us what he's learned through that program and been able to apply to his mortgage business and the mortgage businesses of the originators that work with him in his company. Um, so uh, the last thing that I guess we want to introduce you to um, is, you know, anytime that, by the way, you want to check out what's coming up on the webinar series the next several weeks, posted. You can always go back to our website, mxlcoach.com slash webinars, and you'll be able to see the upcoming schedule of this series and how it proceeds. All right, so last things first, we wouldn't be coaches, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't actually take this all the way through to an action planning mode. First couple of quick questions that you want to ask yourself. Based on today's program, what was the one most valuable thing you heard in this program that you want to begin applying in your business. Okay? And the reason I say pick just one, you'll have the recording, you'll have the opportunity uh, to reach out to this, um, you know, to, to review this program later. Just pick the one thing that was most impactful to you in today's program. Secondly, I want you to, to uh, go ahead and decide what action you need to take. Maybe it is going back to the uh, you know the, the ultimate interview um, uh, webinar and and reviewing what those uh, four key questions were that Earl mentioned to you earlier in today's program. Spending 30 minutes to review that section of the, the webinar from uh, from January uh, from earlier this month, where Earl shared that concept and, and approach and strategy with us. Okay, uh, whatever it is, make the commitment. What action do you need to take to make this part of your business on a daily basis? Third step is decide when you want to have that action item completed. What's your target date for completion? Now, Les Brown's famous comment about shoot for the moon, at least if you miss, you land in the stars kind of thing is what we're talking about here. It may not be totally logical or totally practical, but don't push it out indefinitely. Don't say two months, five months, eight months to implement one tactical idea. Ideally, then he also says, Eric, he also says that if you shoot for the barnyard door and you miss, you know where you're going to land. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> you're definitely right, Earl. Life's through short, so decide what's the most valuable thing you want to implement from this program. What action do you need to take to make it a part of your daily business? And by when are you going to have that action implemented? What's your target date to have it implemented? Ideally, we want one, two weeks, and then come back to this program and pick up the next piece. The third element of this is who are you going to ask to hold you accountable? Whether it's a coach, whether it's a uh, colleague, whether it's a boss, whether it's your spouse, 
pick somebody that you trust and respect enough that when you tell them they're going to do something, you're going to feel guilty if you break that promise. I mean, you've heard me talk about it in previous week's webinars, but for those of you, this is your first event, think about it as a running buddy concept. I mean, let's say you decided you were going to, you know, exercise and start jogging to lose some weight. You know, you exercise morning number one, it's okay, it's a good day, it's, it's pleasant weather. You exercise morning number two, you're a little bit tired, but you get up and do it anyway. Morning number three, you're a lot tired. It's not the best weather out, but you get up and do it anyway because you made a commitment to yourself. But morning four, it's nasty, cold, wet, ugly, snarly weather. You just don't feel like doing it, so you hit the snooze button one more time and go back to sleep. Now imagine if you talk to a friend about this idea, maybe a neighbor who lives near you, and you let that neighbor know that you want to go jogging to lose some weight, and, and, and your neighbor agrees that, you know, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't we do that together? So morning number four rolls around, and it's wet, and it's gnarly, and it's nasty out. But you know your buddy's going to be on the doorstep at 5.30 in the morning to go jogging, so you get up and do it. It's that accountability that can sometimes be the, the linchpin, the, 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 the critical element that makes the difference between whether we follow through on all those dreams, goals, and ideas that we've talked about forever. So whoever it is, again, whether it's a coach, colleague, boss, uh, spouse, whatever, find somebody, tell them what you're going to do and by when you want to do it, and ask them to follow up with you by that target date to hold you accountable to following through on executing that idea. Okay, well, I want to thank you all for attending today's program. Again, one last time, uh, Greg Frost is coming up next week, February 5th, at same time, same station, uh, at 11 o'clock Central, 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific, uh, and 10 o'clock Mountain. I always forget to leave out the Mountain time. Uh, if you would like one of those strategy sessions, of course, all you need to do is go ahead and post the best phone number and email address for our team to contact you so they can get a hold of you to get that appointment scheduled. Uh, if you have any other questions or concerns, obviously still please go ahead and post them in the Q&A. If, if this, today's conversation has triggered any thought um, uh, or question or that you'd like to go deeper on, with one, certainly post that question in the Q&A here and we will get uh, follow up, with, our team will follow up with you over the next week or so and try and get that information in your hands. So again, uh, Interesting. If you'd like a strategy session, go ahead and post your request for a strategy session in the Q&A section at this time. Give us the best phone number or email for our team to reach out to you to get that scheduled. Remember, those sessions are filled on a first-come, first-served basis. Like I said, we only have a handful of those available every week, uh, but we want to do everything in our power to help you grow your business, and the strategy session is one of the best ways to help you do it. Um, in addition, continue to check out the mxlcoach.com slash webinars site uh, for the, um, the upcoming sessions and the next steps in this program. With that in mind, we're going to keep the line open for just a few more minutes here to um, you know, give people the opportunity to go ahead and post in their additional questions or to post in their request for the strategy session. Again, best phone number and email address to reach you for scheduling is important. So go ahead and post that along with your strategy session request. Uh, with that in mind, Earl, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our attendees today? Um, no, not that I can think of offhand, Eric, except I've got to go listen to my Monday jump start. <laughs> that was the phone call I just got. Uh, Monday jump start that came in Tuesday morning. That's a yeah. Isn't that funny? I thought that was pretty funny. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. No, actually, I don't think I have anything uh, else except that you know the, the the brain all works together. There's there's the reptilian is just a part of it. You know, it's just the first place that it, it enters information. And um, on the on the next one that we're going to be talking about, you, you said it was on the twelfth, I think, of uh, March. Um, we get into the limbic system. That's that's where our, our emotions are held, and that's where we can find that emotional connection. So when you go through the ultimate interview, if the, if you do go back through that webinar, um, when you're listening for that part of it, making that emotional connection with people, that's where you're going to find that part is in the in the limbic system. So um, our next webinar is, is I think very interesting, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'd love to see you guys there.
Uh, definitely. We'll keep checking the schedule. I know that, that our, our marketing team has not posted the March series up uh, fully on the on the website yet. Um, I think we have through the February 26th program posted at this point. Uh, but we do have confirmed schedule from URL on the 12th of March uh, and the 19th of March back-to-back -back, uh, weeks. We're going to be doing part two and part three of this series, uh, getting you guys the rest of the information you need about um, mastering communication and connecting through to human behavior, the triune brain theory. Uh, so anyway, guys, thank you for your attendance today. Um, thank you for committing the time. I want to applaud all of you for being the one percenters that have made, taken the initiative and invested your time in bettering yourselves, your knowledge, and your skills uh, as we reach towards growing a, a, a better community. Again, just one last reminder, any Q&A, any questions that you want to, go ahead uh, and post those requests in the Q&A at this time, um, and we'll make sure our team gets followed up with that. And one last opportunity here that if you'd like to go ahead and post uh, your request for a strategy session in the Q&A and chat feature, or go to the www.mxlcoach.com slash webinars here, uh, page, I'll put that up on the screen here. Uh, for us in just a second. If you would like to receive one of those no-cost, no-obligation coaching strategy sessions, just go ahead and post the best phone number and email address uh, to reach out to you so our team can get that scheduled here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, otherwise, you can go ahead and go to the www.mxlcoach.com slash strategy and uh, go ahead and submit your request there with, again, same information, how our team can contact you to get those appointments scheduled. All right, guys. Well, we're going to leave the line open for just a couple of minutes here. Uh, you know, for any final questions or, or strategy session requests, that you can go ahead and get them posted in the chat and webinar platform. Again, Earl, thank you for your time today, and thank you for your insightful knowledge and the incredible way you share it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and thank sign you. off at this time, folks. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I appreciate you having me on today. It was, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, you've always got a wonderful, a lot of wonderful information to share with our members and our audience. So we're very excited to have you as part of the team. Well, I appreciate that. No problem. No problem. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off at this time. Uh, we are going to leave the platform open for just a few more minutes so that everybody has the opportunity to go ahead and post their final questions um, and the um, opportunity, if you'd like, again, to take advantage.